Omaha's news leader, chronicling the stories and people making a difference in our community. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. This is home, and I can't think of anything more rewarding in my career uh, than turning this place around, and, and that's our goal and our aim. He is Nebraska. He understands what it takes. Common sense tells me he's not going to turn things around just overnight, but his history shows that he can do it. As far as I'm concerned, he's going to do just fine, and he's got the support he wants. And everybody wants to get back to the golden days where we're back in conversation. I'm kind of excited to see his reaction to when he comes in and sees, like, everybody in the stadium and the crowd, and just, I don't know, just to kind of see that all come together. And it all did come together for Scott Frost during the spring game with a powerful performance by the offense in front of a sellout crowd of 85,000 happy Husker fans. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Rob McCartney. This is KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. This morning, more of Andy Kendi's one-on-one -on -one interview with Husker head football coach Scott Frost. First, just last week, we learned more details of Frost's seven-year contract. We knew he's getting $5 million a year, but he also has plenty of incentives. Most are the same as they were under Bo Pelini and Mike Riley. Frost gets an extra $200,000 for a Big Ten West title, three hundred dollars for winning the conference championship, $150,000 for making it to a bowl game. Now, the type of bowl makes a big difference. Frost earns two hundred fifty dollars for making a New Year's Six Bowl, three hundred dollars for the national semifinals, three hundred fifty dollars for a championship appearance, and six hundred fifty dollars for winning it all. Well, Frost's first real test comes September 1st at 7 p.m. That's the Huskers' home opener against Akron. After going 4-8 and eight last season, fans are eager for a much better record this year. And they are convinced Frost is the guy to do it. Before we get to Andy's interview, let's first look back to that Sunday last December when Nebraska Athletic Director Bill Moose made it official. It gives me a great deal of pleasure at this time to introduce the 30th head football coach at the University of Nebraska, Scott Frost. It's a happy homecoming for Scott Frost. Words can't describe how much it means to me to be back here. Frost bringing home traits he learned as a Husker quarterback. It's toughness, it's dedication, it's work ethic. That's what Nebraska is, that's what the people of Nebraska are, and that's what this place is going to stand for while I'm here. He's a, a guy that uh, understands, because he lived it, uh, what's important here, and I think he'll get back to those basics, and uh, he'll bring a lot of new things to the table as well. We're going to work harder than everybody else. That's what Nebraska's about, and we're going to be a more united team than anybody else. That's what Nebraska's about. Frost directed the top scoring offense in the country at UCF this season. So does the new head coach expect to modify his offensive approach going to the Big Ten? I'm hoping the Big Ten has to modify their system for us. <laughs> Yeah, that same day Scott Frost met with the team, said he saw fire in their eyes from the start. And as KETV News Watch Evans' Matt Lothrop reports, several former players were there too, providing moral support for the new head coach. Athletic Director Bill Moose also organized letter winners to greet Frost upon entering the weight room. With only about a 12-hour notice, more than 150 former Huskers showed up, a gesture of the unity Frost is seeking. We've got to get everybody on the same page. We've got to get unified. Uh, as he mentioned you know, numerous times, you know, that you, word unity um, from the state, uh, you know, to the, to the former players, to, you know, the current players. Um, it's such an important factor. In that mix of former Huskers, former teammate Matt Davison, who was instrumental in Frost's return. I'll give you a simple quote. Matt's role was pestering me until I agreed to come here. <laughs> I felt like right now was the right time for him to be the coach here. I thought he was ready three years ago, but as he said, it wasn't as good a timing as it is now. And it's because all the leadership is in place. And from there, Frost didn't waste any time assembling his leadership team. He brought his entire staff from Central Florida to Nebraska. It's a group that Andy Kendi reports hasn't lost a game since being together. Even though Scott Frost and his 10 assistants are all in their first year of coaching at Nebraska, there are plenty of ties to the Huskers. And it's not just Frost himself. 
his running backs coach, Ryan Held, offensive line coach, Greg Austin, and inside linebackers coach, Barrett Rude, all played for Nebraska. On offense, Frost will call the plays during the season, but will lean heavily on his offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach, Troy Walters, his tight ends coach, Sean Becton, and quarterbacks coach, Mario Verdusco. The defensive coordinator is Eric Chenander, who started coaching with Frost more than a decade ago at Northern Iowa. Mike Dawson coaches the defensive line, Travis Fisher the defensive backs, and Javon DeWitt coaches the outside linebackers and is the special teams coordinator. In all, 11 members of the staff, 25 years of coaching experience at nine different Power 5 programs. Well, Frost's first chance to show off the changes he implemented came in April during the spring game. Red won convincingly over white 49-9 with Adrian Martinez leading the offense. Well, after the game, Frost talked about being back home and how the team performed. Personally, that was special for me, uh, walking out of the, the tunnel and hearing the fans. Uh, that brought back more memories than a lot of other things have, especially just the smell of the stadium uh, with the food in there and just uh, took me back a long time. So it was, it was a pretty special day for me. It, it, man, it's the first step in a journey for us. I, I thought we did some really good things at times. I thought there were some guys making plays. Um, it was a little sloppy at times and, and we made some mistakes. First spring, uh, I think the guys have come a long way already. and. I told them that they, they can't see this as the end of the process. They just have to see that as they're familiar with what we're asking them to do now for the most part. And we got to take a little time off and then really have a resurgence and a lot of effort in summer conditioning to make sure we get better at everything we're doing. And with that in mind, when they sat down to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, one of Andy Kennedy's first questions to Coach Frost was about how important these next few months are before fall camp starts. Well, one of the most glaring needs we found when we got here was uh, development of our players. Uh, I think the guys that are currently on roster had a lot of room to grow and weren't developed in, in the way that we were comfortable with having developed from a strength or conditioning standpoint. Uh, I think Zach felt like the, the first round in winter was really laying a base with, with strength and making sure uh, that they had the motors to, to be able to uh, continue to improve. Uh, this next step is phase two, and there's there's going to be a lot of strength um, work yet this summer. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of ground to catch up on from that standpoint, but we'll be incorporating in more running and sprinting and and getting our guys in better shape. No vedral, the waiver thing is that that's not even going to that can't happen this year, is it? Is it possible? I don't know. Uh, we're going to fight for our players every chance we mm -hmm. get. Um, and if there's even a slight opportunity to, to help a kid become eligible or, or accomplish what they want to accomplish, we're going to fight for but them. But we don't know yet and don't know when a time they will be. Okay. Don't know. Um, uh, Michael Decker, everything good with him on his rehab? Yeah, we got a bunch of guys coming off injuries. Uh, Mark Meyer's done a great job in the training room for us. and. Uh, most of the guys are moving in, in a great direction, and we hope to get quite a few guys back. Maurice Washington, not going to be able to participate this summer, but you're hopefully going to get him in the fall. What can you update us on that, and um, how confident are you that he'll be uh, in Nebraska Red, even in a practice setting, come this fall? We're working. You know, every year we have some guys uh, in our recruiting class that still have some work to do uh, to be able to be enrolled and be eligible. Uh, Maurice has had a, a a really tough ride in the last couple of years. Uh, he's transferred a couple times. Uh, his fa father passed away. Uh, I think there's some off the field things that have, have led to him struggling a little bit in the classroom. But uh, once once a player is committed to us, we're committed to them, and we're going to do everything we can for all these kids to to try to help them finish what they need to finish and become eligible. And how thrilled are you to have Breon Dixon eligible? That's got to be a nice boost. Yeah. Again. Uh, you know, Breon, we're glad to have. Uh, he had a good spring for us, and um, I, I think that's a good ruling with the kids leaving an, a, a, a place that uh, got in a little bit of trouble to be able to, to move on to another place and be eligible. So uh, we're happy to have Breon on board. I was down in Orlando for your championship game, and I, and I saw what you guys did before the game in terms of the coach's handshake. Yeah, after you're after you're done with pregame warmups, and you did that here. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Does that have a certain name? And, and how long have you been doing that, where the coaches line up and before you go into the the locker room after the team leaves the field? You know, quite a bit of our culture and the way we want to do things is going to be born out of 
the way Nebraska used to be. Um, a lot of other things are going to be born out of Oregon and mm -hmm. our culture there. And uh, shaking hands with the other coaches, we, we, I started doing it when we were at Oregon. Uh, but you know, really, what we want everybody in the program to understand is it's not about any individual; it's about everybody. Mm -hmm. And and the better we're all on the same page and, and all for one and one for all, the better team will be. And that's just kind of our ritual as coaches to, to greet everybody else after warm-ups is over and, and make sure we're all on the same page and, and all committed to one another. Nick Saban was quoted by USA Today uh, about the self-proclaimed national championship is not the same as earning it. That was his quote. And just your reaction to that. I, I'm done talking about that. Yeah. Um, I think I, I'm on the record enough with that kind of stuff. but. Um, Alabama's probably got one or two championships that they claim that weren't necessarily recognized by everybody. You've been on the job um, six months now. Is there anything that, that is more than you thought um, in terms of expectations, either on or off the field? Um, is there anything that'd be like, man, I did not expect it would be this? I, I think the passion of the fan base and, and the enthusiasm uh, even exceeds anything that I could have expected. Um, and, and to some degree, we need players on our team that love football and are as excited about it as the fan base right now. Um, you know, I've been cheered getting on airplanes and greeted uh, warmly everywhere I go around the state. And that kind of passion and enthusiasm doesn't exist everywhere. Um, we got a lot of work to do to make sure that we're putting a product on the field that, that the fans that have that enthusiasm are proud of. And right, we're working every day to try to, to move in that direction. It's got to be a unique surreal feeling when you walk into a luncheon no, like DJ's stuff, Heroes yeah. luncheon last week in Omaha and they give you a standing oh, ovation. That. Is that a... There's one right over there. It's going to be weird for you, isn't it? Or what's that like? It, it's special. You know, I, I talk about this a lot, but every great program goes through what Nebraska went through. Um, if you look at almost any great program in the country that was dominant for a long time, uh, usually after the group of people that made it that special dissolves, um, there's a period of time where they aren't as successful. Yeah, just picking one, you know, Oklahoma under Barry Switzer was great for a long time, and then there were some down years until they got the right people back on board. Um, we came back here to Nebraska because we felt like the time was right, um, the situation was right, the people were going to be behind us. Um, we'd have enough time to, to build the program, not in a way to just try to get one good season, to, but to build it in a, in a way that will lead to sustained success. And uh, I'm grateful for the enthusiasm and, and the excitement of the fan base. And, and it's really special to be home and to be doing the job that I love to do in my home state. Um, I hope that enthusiasm is also accompanied with patience because we want to build this thing the right way. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, a balance you have to strike with the fan base and say, hey, because, you know, I'm out. I, that's the everyone wants to talk about it. What can you do in year one? We know it's, it's step by step and this is the first step of a long journey. but. What do you think about this fall? Like people say, how many wins can they get? You can't think like that though if you're building for the future, can you? We never measure our success based on wins. Um, I think the wins come if, if we're focused on the things that matter and that's uh, caring about one another, protecting the, the man to the right and the man to the left, uh, trying to be better every single day that we're a part of this program. And uh, I think more than anything, if the fans see improvement, if they see the right attitude, if they see the right effort on the field, uh, that's going to be a sign that we're moving in the right direction. And I don't know how many wins that's going to equate to, but I, I know if we're doing things the way that we should be doing them, that the wins will inevitably come. And you, I remember when you were hired during that opening news conference and somebody asked, uh, uh, how are you going to adjust to the Big Ten? You said, oh, the Big Ten's going to have to adjust to us. Or, or when, when, when you see Bill Moose say the Ohio State, Michigan, uh, uh, maybe uh, running scared and tongue in cheek. But, do you think that there'll be, you guys will have an extra target on your back given some of the things that have been said or is that just part of the deal? No, I don't think we'll have a target on our back. Um, you know, we're coming off a four and eight season. Uh, so we're just trying to battle to get, to get back to a, a place where we're competing for um, our half of the conference or bigger things. Um, you know, I, I do think that the Big Ten is, is probably the one major conference where our, the, the type of schemes that we run on both sides of the ball stand out a little bit more. Uh, it's a little more traditional in this league. There, there's some teams that are, are doing things similar to us, but I think we'll be a little more unique in this league. And 
Um, by the time we get our culture in place and, and our scheme um, to a point where all the players are familiar with it, I, I think it will offer us a little bit of an advantage. Isn't it important, though, for you to be out there showing confidence in your guys to say, hey, if my guy, my coach, is showing us this confidence, saying, hey, the Big Ten is going to have to adjust to us, doesn't that help trickle down to your players? I mean, you'd hope it would, right? Yeah, I think any organization takes on the characteristics of its leaders, mm -hmm. and, and our coaching staff works hard to to promote an attack mentality all the time by our guys. I don't want our guys to be afraid of anything. I want our guys to be confident, go down the field and, and give everything they have. And uh, if as coaches and, and leaders of this program, we can embody those principles, then, then I think the rest of the team will too. Um, you know, we're not going to be as good in game one as we're going to be in game 12. We probably won't be as good in game 12 this year as we will in game 12 the following year. But I want our guys to, to take the field every single time they go out there with a lot of confidence and expect to win. You've been asked about Coach Osborne a lot. I'm guessing it's wonderful having him so close to the program. Uh, the lessons learned maybe as a player, and then have you already learned some lessons that you used in this day and age as a head coach that are timeless? Tell you, being back around Nebraska is special, but being back around Coach Osborne uh, just makes me smile. Uh, he and I met up at 5 o'clock in the morning last week and went turkey hunting and sat in a little uh, <laughs> tent together for a couple hours, and we're going to do the same thing tomorrow morning. That's cool. Um, more than anything, I, he's going to be an unbelievable resource to me and, and to our program. Um, you know, he ran a, a program here that was the best in the country for 25 years, and there's a lot of wisdom that you can get from someone like that. When you say turkeys, you mean real turkeys, not like reporters, right? <laughs> what did, you get? did you get any turkeys? We didn't get one the first day. Uh, Coach Osborne has, has some land, and, and he loves to do things like that. And uh, we didn't get one, but I still had a, a great time just being around him in, in a setting like that and being able to talk to him That is really hours. cool. That is really cool. He never denied not meaning reporters. Hmm. Well, it's time for us to take a short break, but when we come back, more of Andy's interview with the Husker head coach, including his thoughts on the importance of certain game day traditions at Memorial Stadium. You're watching KATV News Watch 7's Chronicle. You know, this whole thing's a work in progress. Um, there was a lot of things we needed to change, fix, uh, develop to get the team where we want it. We're not going to get it all the way there in one spring ball. So uh, I'm pleased with the progress, but we need another uh, summer conditioning. Uh, we need another fall camp. Uh, and, and even then, uh, we're going to be better, but not all the way there. So our, our guys need to embrace the fact that it's going to be a process and we're working to get there. So in other words, don't expect miracles this season. Welcome back to KETV News Watch Evans Chronicle. This morning, more of Andy Kendi's one-on-one -on -one interview with Husker head coach Scott Frost. Now, they talked about managing expectations, and the thing that had much of Husker Nation buzzing after the spring game, the music during the tunnel walk. I don't think we made a decision yet. Um, I, I said this before, you know, I was part of the tradition with the tunnel walk, and mm -hmm. I think it's one of the, the best traditions in college football. Uh, but to me, the, the beauty of the tunnel walk is the team coming out of the tunnel united, um, ready to, to go to battle on the football field uh, and being greeted by the best fan base in the country. And it has more to do with that than what song's playing to me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think a final decision's been made, but um, we're going to make it before this, the season comes, and, and I think people will be happy with it. Another tradition, black shirts. Are you a one black shirt per position guy, or have you figured that one out yet? Black shirts are going to be earned, um, and I've said this before. Um, black shirts isn't just the starting defense. Um, there's a lot more that goes into it. The right attitude, the right mindset, toughness, leadership, uh, dedication, effort, uh, all those things embody what a black shirt is to me. And going into fall camp, there's not going to be one kid on our team that has a black shirt. Uh, they're going to have to earn them individually, and um, it's going to be hard to earn them. But when a kid gets a, a black shirt and gets that title, it's going to mean something. Tradition again with Iowa playing on Black Friday. Uh, are you for a traditional opponent? Because you're going to go away from that just because the schedules have been made for a couple years after with Minnesota and here, not this year, but following. But are you all for having a traditional uh, opponent in Iowa on Black Friday and playing on Black Friday? I'm all for that. You know, I grew up around here going to to games the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, I was Oklahoma for the longest time, and uh, those are some of my best memories in Memorial Stadium as a fan, just watching those games. 
Uh, I think that's a tradition that we need to hold on to. I, I know Iowa's in favor of having them be our traditional opponent on Black Friday, and uh, I'd love to see that happen. All right, now recently, the U.S. Supreme Court lifted the ban on sports wagering and betting. Nebraska says the ruling won't change anything in the Cornhusker state, but Andy asked Scott Frost how it could affect him as a coach and if it will change the way the team does its injury reports. You know, decisions like, like that one are, are way above my pay grade <laughs> and, and way uh, being decided by people a lot smarter than me. Um, we get to know our players as absolutely well as we can so we can uh, be informed about everything that's going on with them and, and try to help them make the right decision with every decision that, that they're faced with. And obviously not being a part of, of things like gambling is, is an important lesson that everybody has to learn. And uh, we'll make sure we monitor our guys no matter what decisions are made and make sure they're doing the right things. But as a coach, you want to keep things. I mean, you don't want to divulge injury reports, right? I mean, I don't know if you. That's we're going to protect our players, yeah. uh, and that our players' well-being and, and their success is our number one priority. And uh, I certainly think it's better for our players if, if other people don't know if they have something that that's bothering them. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll keep as many things in house as we possibly can. And you are a player. Where do you stand on uh, the stipends for players and, and should they get paid or what have you? And obviously they're getting a free education. Uh, you want to fight to make sure your players are having the best experience possible, most likely. Uh, but where is the line drawn? You know, I'm all for uh, players' rights and an ability to, to do things to make their lives better. Uh, I just hope we're careful with every step that we take in that mm -hmm. direction. Uh, there is a beauty to college athletics and amateurism and um, the rules that we have in place. And, and I think sometimes we make knee-jerk reactions and, and take things too far and, and open up uh, cans of worms that people aren't expecting and, and problems arise that people may not be expecting. Um, I'm a traditionalist and, and believe in the beauty of, of college athletics. and. Uh, I think there's room to, to improve to help uh, student athletes, but I hope we don't take it so far that it affects the game. All right, we'll be back with some final thoughts like what it'll take for Nebraska to win another national championship. First, a reminder, your comments are an important part of the show. If you want to be heard, email them to news at KETV.com. Remember, we love hearing from you, and we'll be right back. You're watching KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle, and this morning we've gone in-depth with Husker head football coach Scott Frost, and we saved Andy Kendi's most important question for last. Why now is the time to win a national championship, and why Frost is just the guy to do it? We're about winning championships, but every single guy on my coaching staff is about more than that, too. Um, we see coaching as an opportunity to help young men and to be servants to young men and help make them the, the best possible version of themselves that they can be. And we hope those relationships last long past football. And uh, when you really get down to it, that's more important than championships. But I, I think when you're doing things that way, it, it leads to wins and potentially leads to championships. Um, my opinion, Nebraska went away from what worked for Nebraska for a long time. We're going to do our best to, to recover some of those things. and and try to do things in, in some of the same ways that Coach Osborne did when he won championships here. And if we keep moving in that direction and doing things the right way, I, I think a championship will come before too long. And thanks to Scott Frost and Andy Kendi for that. Just last week, we got the rundown of six Husker games, including the first four and which network will be carrying them. That's online right now. And remember, if you missed any part of this show or you want to watch it again, it's on KETV.com. Just look for the menu button, click on Chronicle. I'm Rob McCartney. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here next Sunday morning for KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle.